So if I submit this, I'll get zero score because I have basically selected every single wrong answer and none of the correct answers. And if I select everything, then I also get some credit for having selected the correct choices. Anyways, uh, so with all that uh, technical detail behind the scoring um, aside, so your goal with a question like this is to get 100%, which uh, if you're just guessing randomly, it will take you many tries because unless you understand what's going on, uh, it might have taken you many tries to get that this is correct choice and that this is correct choice. So that's what's going to give you full credit. Now, so suppose you know that that's the answer, that this is correct and this is correct. As in, uh, when you have a car starting up from rest, then the velocity is zero um, at that moment in time, but the acceleration is not zero. And a ball that is thrown directly upward at the top of its trajectory uh, also matches the condition and none of the other choices match the condition. And so, you know, once you get to this point, then you know what the correct answer is. And, you know, that's good. That's good for you to know. Um, but what I want you to get more at is to understand why these two are correct. And I, I think it's easier to understand why the other ones are not correct. So why these two are correct. Um, so a ball that is thrown directly upward at the top of its trajectory, that is a little bit easier. Um, let me actually demonstrate this with a, a simulation. Um, I was actually using this for another class, but let me just reset this here. So uh, this is a simulation. I think you'll see me using other uh, context for this class. I, I have recorded the videos where I use this simulation. So uh, when I have uh, something like this, then um, so this is how I can set up a ball that is thrown directly upward. I can set up an initial condition for this ball. I can give it an initial velocity. So directly upward means I'm giving you it, uh, giving, giving the ball a y velocity, a positive, let's say velocity of plus seven and no x component of velocity. So when I let the simulation run, the ball will go directly upward and then we'll see what happens. Um, let the simulation run. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like. And um, so what the, let me slow down the simulation a little bit so that I have time to stop it at the moment when the, the choice is describing. So I think this is something that uh, people need a training to uh, learn to think in this way is um, when you look at a motion like this, it's kind of easy to think about the entire motion as a whole. You threw a ball up, it went up, and it came down. All right. Now, <laughs> the thing that needs training to break down and uh, think it through in very clear detail is trying to think of this as something that uh, as some sort of a change that happens over time. So you can talk about what a snapshot, what is going on at one moment in time. So at this moment in time, t equals zero, this ball has a velocity of, um, of seven meters per second. That's kind of how I set it up. And when I let it run, as it's moving up, now it has moved up, it still has some velocity. It's you know changed. I didn't change it. The simulation changed it. Simulation changed it because the simulation includes this gravitational acceleration. That's why it's changing. So when this is at the very top, there is where it has zero velocity or close to zero velocity but it still has a downward acceleration. I wonder if I can kind of illustrate that. Um, let's just see, velocities, visualize. I don't know if I can visualize the acceleration. That might not be something I can actually visualize. Is there other? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there isn't really. Um, so 
I think this is what I can do. I can uh, draw a plot. And in a more mathematical physics class, this is how we would do this. Uh, we would do show or you know, we would use a graph to represent this quantitative information because that's really what people need a training in, in thinking quantitatively about something that you can also approach it qualitatively, but qualitative approach sometimes misleads you. So when I plot this, uh, so right now it's uh, plotting uh, time and speed. Let me just plot that and see what I get. So it starts out with some speed here, seven meters per second. Okay, it's slowing down as it goes up. And at the very top, oh, I see it kind of looks like it's bouncing off of zero. And then it's uh, speeding up again until it comes back down to the same-ish speed that it started out at. All right. Um, so I guess that that's uh, what we are referring to here then, here, zero at the top, that it has a zero speed. I mean, you can see that it's uh, kind of intuitive that, um, yeah, that, that's uh, uh, at the very top, you have zero speed. Um, the second part that it has non-zero acceleration takes a little more thinking through. I guess you could kind of take it as a given, you know, it's in a, um, it's in a gravitational field, so it always has downward acceleration. You could accept it that way. I think uh, a better way to look at it is to um, graph something slightly different, not speed, but velocity with a positive and negative values. So uh, let me make this a y component of velocity. Um, yeah, and yeah, so uh, I guess I'll show gravity field too. And let me just let it run and see what happens. As it goes up, it's a slowing down. And when it's at the very top and reaches a zero velocity, it doesn't uh, stay at zero velocity. And in fact, so now the later part, so this is what I hope you find interesting. At this moment, where it reaches zero velocity, with the speed, it, this graph suddenly changed the direction. But when you, uh, when you graph a velocity, it doesn't do that. It's changing in the exact same way it was changing before. And now uh, as it moves down, so it's speeding up. But what speeding up here means is that velocity is getting more and more negative. So at this moment in time, when the ball was at zero velocity, its uh, acceleration is not zero. Uh, the information that you see in the screen there, dy dx is kind of telling you about the slope of this curve that at that point, yeah, slope is not zero. It's minus 9.75 or, you know, close to this uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, the gravitational field. Um, so, so that example, I think once you kind of think it through, it's uh, easy to understand, uh, partly because there's multiple ways to understand it. Now, um, the other example is, I think, one that I get more questions about, which is, uh, which is this one, a car starting up from rest. Because uh, then, I guess, um, I think there are different places where you could uh, uh, have questions on, as in uh, a car starting up. So since it's moving, then that means the velocity is not zero, isn't it? Um, that's one way you might ask a question. Or the other is, it says rest, so it's not moving, so acceleration is zero too, isn't it? <laughs> so having asked both of those straw man questions, let me set up this simulation to help to kind of demonstrate how that particular scenario satisfies both uh, of the described conditions. One, that velocity is zero. Two, that acceleration is also non-zero. So I need to set this up. Uh, let's see. Um, I, instead of a car, I'm just going to have a block. Block is easier. Let me just let the simulation run for a bit so that uh, it's resting. Um, so uh, I think I can let it run faster. If I'll just, I'll just do a slow acceleration. So let me pause the simulation while I make changes. So these are some of the changes I'm going to make. I'm going to make it frictionless. It just makes things easier. Um, 
and uh, I need to add a thruster. The thruster is going to give me a way to apply a constant acceleration. So there will be some force. I think that's going to be fine. And um, let me just uh, try. Oh, wait, is there a way to talk, toggle? Uh, activation key. Yeah, let me choose an activation key. Um, S for start. And uh, so that will toggle. Um, so if I let it run, okay, yeah. And when I press S, it starts. Okay, good. Um, all right, so I think I'm all set up. Let me uh, show the, the velocity plot so that I'll have something quantitative to talk about this over. So here's the velocity plot. And let me make it a velocity plot here. It's not too relevant, but let me make it a plot of the horizontal velocity. So, OK, I'm going to let the simulation run for a bit. And then after waiting a second or so, I'm going to let it accelerate. And after waiting for another second or so, I'm going to stop the acceleration, but let the simulation continue running. And then eventually, I'm going to stop everything. OK. So simulation is running. Acceleration starts. And then no acceleration. And then stop the simulation. Yeah, and you know my block went off, went off to the right. Um, you can find it later. <laughs> um, maybe. Uh, let me actually, okay, let me redo this. Uh, I'm going to make the force smaller. Uh, one newton. Okay. Uh, let me redo it. Toggle. And then stop. And then stop the whole thing. All right. So this is the quantitative description of the entire motion. And um, this is where quantitative description is useful. It helps you divide the motion into different parts. So, you know, when we talk about a car starting from rest, it's easy to uh, be misled by um, different parts of the motion that, um, so, you know, a car starting up from rest. You could be misled by the rest part. You could be misled by starting apart. Let me point out all those in this motion graph of, uh, of the position, or sorry, of the velocity versus time. So for this part where the car was at rest, your velocity is zero, good. <laughs> and your acceleration is also zero. As in it, velocity remains at zero, so the slope is zero, so acceleration is zero. Now, uh, that's the kind of from rest part. And in this part of the graph, you are seeing the motion. Here, velocity is not zero. Velocity is increasing, increasing, increasing. Um, so acceleration is also not zero. So this is the kind of moving part. Now, the challenging thing about that particular scenario is you really have to see, think about a single moment in time. And that single moment in time is this moment here, where it's just starting. Now, where it's just starting, your velocity is still zero. Or at where I have the cursor, you see 0 0.006 meter per second. You can imagine me positioning it so correctly that it'll be exactly at zero. So your velocity is zero. You are at rest. Now, you see that uh, line there. That line indicates the slope. The slope is not zero. Your velocity is changing. That's why your velocity is changing away from zero as time goes. So when you imagine this particular moment in time where the car just is just starting up, that's where your velocity is still zero, but the acceleration is not. So, so yeah, it, uh, um, you know, it is a bit of a tricky question in that uh, when you think about it quantitatively like this, then it's easier to make sense of it, kind of use, help let math help guide you. But um, you know, it, this is a challenge with the conceptual physics. Uh, physics is uh, frankly easier to describe with all the math. So when you don't have the math, then it's a hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 